Hey, Steve Soretsky here. Um, just wanted to touch on the Vancouver pre-sale market. Um, obviously, I've talked about this a lot. There's my article in the Globe and Mail. Um, there's a lot of stuff that came out last week, so I just wanted to touch on that. Uh, basically, some of you kind people watching this were able to dig up some homework and find a lot of these pre-sales that are actually being marketed uh, on these Chinese websites, Chinese Facebook pages. Uh, basically promoting all our big local projects here in Vancouver. So basically, I mean, all the all the big names you can basically think of. I think Vancouver House, the Alberni, uh, the Ark, Concord Gardens in Richmond. Uh, they're basically all being marketed off overseas. Um, and there was someone was able to pull up some um, some screens, take some screenshots and post them and send them to me. So uh, basically, just highlighting that. You know, there was these, there's these sale, like I've been saying, there's sales centers, they have sales centers set up overseas in Hong Kong and China, and they basically screenshot it and sent them to me. So, um, basically these projects are all being sold overseas first, primarily, I mean, obviously from a developer's perspective, it's much, much easier to sell. Uh, you basically just go over there and you can sell an entire floor to one single person. So, uh, I guess maybe don't really blend the developer in terms of, if, if, from a capitalist approach. I mean, if you're looking to make the most money and uh, sell them the, the quickest. I mean, obviously you can go offshore. So even these big guys like Concord Pacific, West Bank, uh, they got their sales centers over in Hong Kong. Again, I'm going to put a link in the description below to those screenshots. Um, so if you need any more evidence or proof uh, of sort of what's happening, uh, that is going to be in the description below. But um, yeah, I mean, again, one of the big projects was West Bank's, they, they made a mandate that this project in West Vancouver, they were only going to sell it to to locals, and uh, that was why they got the project approved, etc. And anyways, this was one of the screenshots that someone said, hey, what the heck, West Bank's promoting it here, their sales center in Hong Kong, I thought this was a locals only project. Um, so I guess West Bank sort of came back out and they said, oh, no, 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 we... We uh, pre-sold it to locals only for 30 days, and then we, you know, we sold a couple of units, and then boom, we went over overseas. So we we did we filled our mandate of, of 30 days, and and um, you know these people that buy it overseas, they have to sign an agreement that they're they're only going to live in it, that they won't uh, use it as a speculative investment. So, um, but of course, you know, signing a piece of paper. Uh, I, I don't think that's going to do much, but anyways, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to see the comments in this saying, Oh, well, people should be able to do with whatever they want with the develop with their unit and, and, uh, you know, developers should be able to sell to whoever they want to. And that, that's, you know, I'm sure that's totally fine. Uh, that's not my, my issue. I think that the thing that I'm trying to shine a light on is the development industry is trying to tell you that the only way to get out of this uh, housing crisis is they're going to try to build their way out. And so if you go back and historically, nobody's ever built their way out of a housing bubble. It's, it's never been done. So uh, again, and Josh Gordon, uh, professor asked if you wrote a report on this last week, but basically just talking about the supply side and how these guys just keep pushing it. And nobody wants to look at, they don't want to look at the demand side. Uh, they just want to sell these units overseas and, and uh, you know, pull in all the profits that they can. You're trying to build to keep up with speculative behavior. So when you have people that are buying, trying to buy, you know, two, three, four in condo investments, um, you know, when you're caught up in a speculative mania where prices have gone up 50% in the last two years, it's the best investment since sliced bread. Everybody wants a piece. So everyone just piles in and they're trying to buy more and more and more. And so the fact that you're going to try to, build to keep up with that uh, I think it's it's totally idiotic it'll never happen so again you got to look at the demand side it's the only way to to slow it down I mean you look at the the massive uh, you know credit bubble that Canada has been able to run up again they're the most uh, indebted of really any country in the world right now I think that uh, their private household debt is 250 percent of GDP something like just over that so uh, you have this uh, amazing uh, credit growth in the, in the mortgage uh, markets. Again, when incomes are flat, how, do, how else do you keep up with this 50% price growth? It's only the only way to take on more leverage, a bigger mortgage, etc. So that's how you slow it. 
Um, but anyways, that's sort of where they're going at. I basically wanted to put this video together because I've had probably about three or four people in the last two weeks reach out to me, ask me if I can help them with a pre-sale condo, ironically. And, um, you know, the fact of the matter is I can't. Uh, I don't have the inside scoop with the developers. Uh, I don't really know of any local realtors that do. There's maybe a couple odd guys here and there that can maybe squeeze you in. They got the ends with the developer. Uh, but even then, it's going to be very slim pickings, if, if at all, if you can get your hands on anything. So uh, locally, I don't really know any realtors that actually are able to get access to these pre-sale condos and get you in. Like I said, they have sales centers over in Hong Kong and in China. Um, so if you want a pre-sale condo, you have much better odds of getting a plane ticket, jumping on a plane and flying over to Hong Kong and getting into one of these sales centers. Uh, because if you're trying to do it locally, you know, if you're signing up on one of these VIP lists, um, you know, thinking you're going to get on, it's not going to happen. So, and I just think from this perspective of, you know, what these developers are charging for the pre-sale condos, I think they're, they're grossly overcharging. I think they're getting away, away with it, obviously, because, uh, the market is so hot, inventory is so tight that they're basically charging any single price that they want and people are paying it. Uh, again, the very, very, very few people that are actually able to get into it. Um, so I know it's going to be a little bit looser in other areas. You go to Langley, I'm sure you have a much better chance. But if you're looking in Vancouver, Richmond, uh, you know, Burnaby, all of those condos are basically sold at sales centers overseas. So uh, get a plane ticket to Hong Kong, fly over there, and you have a much better chance. So... Uh, that's my advice to you. I really can't help with the pre-sale condos and yeah, basically again, um, my, my message to this again as developers, again, you know, if they're paying, I get it from their perspective, they're paying a premium for the land. Land has never been more expensive here. So, um, they're almost incentivized to build like in Vancouver, especially is to build these luxury units. Um, that's really the only way that they can almost make money. So really what needs to happen is they need to get incentivized from the government. They need to be basically subsidized uh, to build affordable units, to build, you know, non-luxury for local people. Um, so, you know, asking the developer to, I guess, sacrifice money, you know, it's going to be hard to do. I guess, again, my only problem is developers are trying to push this message out into the media uh, that it's supply, supply, supply. Uh, it's the only way we're ever going to make units affordable for you. Uh, you poor local people, and they're building all these units and selling them overseas at these uh, offshore sales centers. So uh, it's, it's just a totally conflicted message. Uh, again, you got to look at the demand side, especially if they're not going to sell them locally. So I get it. Do whatever you want. But please do not preach that it's the solution. Uh, anyways, hope that helped. I know it's a bit of a rant, and see you soon.